from the wise, wise, wise words of Bill Ingvall. Do you want to know what happened in this house today while you were at your job? <laughs> today we're going to talk about not bringing the stress of work into your everyday life. My name's Jeff. That's Mike. Where my wife still likes me. Let's do this. ask you how you're doing i'm yeah. fine by the way I'm, I'm first this time. <laughs> i jumped into it first so does that mean i get asked the question uh, you can ask questions we got our uncommon questions here got them laid out because all of you keep telling me i need to not look at them ahead of time how would you know if i looked at them ahead of time or not yeah. uncommon questions great conversations for your wife if you don't know what to talk about go get this box from amazon there's that many questions in it <laughs> do it that way can you see that can you see that and over huh? time can you see it uh, anyway. over time we'll forget the first ones and you can do it over and over and yeah, over right <laughs> there's dirty versions of this game too oh what is it called i'll find it for one of these episodes there's a dirty version there's <laughs> i wouldn't recommend this um <laughs> this is not even related to the question but i'm a pastor so are you uh, we don't do sexting of any kind. Oh, no. Because my phone's face down on the table over here. But if I'm sitting at my desk or something and, it, and mm -hmm. you know, there's a big old picture of a boob or something like that looks really bad or, you know, iPhones are much better now. Like if the phone is locked, the notifications just say notifications. Right. But if your phone can see your face oh, and your spouse and sends you something, it shows up. So we don't do any of that. Um, or, you know, like, um, I haven't done it in a while, but when I was a youth pastor and you were the only phone in the room, like you let kids use your phone to call their parents for rides oh, and stuff yeah. like that. And you're, yeah. So we don't do any of that stuff, but there is a sexting version of this. Oh my like goodness. right now, send your wife this. And it's like, Hey, I want you to do this when you get home tonight. Um, it's yeah, we don't do any of that. There is, if that's your thing, there's a, Oh, what is it called? I'll find it. It's yeah. a black box. Um, have you ever faked something? What did you fake and why did you fake it? I would love to ask every woman to answer this question to their spouse. <laughs> Honestly answer it. Um, what have I faked it? What why did I fake I it? Faked and why did I fake it? Well, I mean, they're, they're, so going back as a father... When the kids were young. Oh, that was a great performance. Oh, that was a great kid. <laughs> I don't think that counts. But I mean, <laughs> that that's something like that. But I mean, I've been at, 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 at homes where you go into somebody's house, they invite you over. Oh, I made you this beautiful meal. Oh, the, and we love this. And you mm -hmm. sit down and you're like. It's good. Mm -hmm. mm. Just you take a bite, you grab a drink. Take some a bite, of, grab some a drink. Of, some of you have done that for your wife. Stop. Yes. That's a whole different Perhaps, conversation. Sure. If your wife can't cook, just tell her. Deal with it. Oh, my wife is an amazing buy her, cook. Buy her, I mean, look at that. buy her an Instapot or HelloFresh. Oh, Instapots are awesome. Oh. We bought two. <laughs> I need another one. I get, just don't know what else to one. do with it other than cook meat. Oh, we cook lasagna in it. We do everything. That's like I need to learn how to do the other yeah. stuff. Have but. I ever faked? I'm sure I have. Yeah, I mean, I know we've, we've all done it some way, somehow, and it doesn't have to be necessarily, you know. I'm trying to think of a, like, specific reason why I faked it. Because, I mean, like, maybe I'm being technical, but, like, I use, like, illustrations and stories that are not true in, like, sermon illustrations, but, like, that, I don't think that's the same thing. No, that that's proven a point, but, I mean. Have I faked something, and why did I fake it? I You're probably fake confidence all the time. Like, there's a lot of times oh. I have no idea what I'm talking about or what I'm doing, but we're going to make it look like we did. Oh, yeah. Like, I do that all the time. I mean, there's, there's faking being sick so you can get out of work or getting, in my case, there was times, you know, I don't want to go to the in-laws and I'm, oh, I don't feel good, babe. <laughs> yeah, things like that. Yeah. Uh, 
I don't have that relationship with my in-laws. I'm trying to think like, I don't know. Like, I, I'm lazy. Like, I'm... Yeah, but you don't fake that. No, I don't. <laughs> but I also, like, I don't have anything to hide. Like, I am who I am. Yeah. Um, what about in your military days? Did you ever fake anything there? No, because people die if you fake it there. Well, no, I meant, like, you're, you're cleaning and stuff like that. No, because people die. Oh, okay. I mean, it sounds dumb, and that sounds like... I. Not put everything into it, probably, but I did just did I just not do something and try to cover it. No, because like we call that gun decking, and that's a whole we could spend a whole show talking about that. But like, it sounds dumb, but like, you sweep and clean a lot in the military. Like, eighty percent right. of my military career is cleaning something. But that's so that you know your space and you know if something's broken or you know if something's bad because if one of your pieces of equipment or something that's vital to your mission is broken because you didn't take care of it, somebody dies. Right. And so, like, that's, no. And I I may be one of the few that, like, I, I took cleaning seriously. I mean, and you clean the same space every single, when you're on deployment, and even at home when you're in port, like, you clean the same little six by six by six square box every single day. Um. But yeah, no, like, I mean, that's the whole point of boot camp. Like, you spend eight weeks going through attention to detail. Everything needs to be in its place every single time. So if it's out of place, you know why. So, yeah, no, I personally do not fake stuff like that because people, other people's lives depend on it. Okay. Now, sweeping up dust and dirt, does somebody's life immediately depend on it right there? No, but keeping it clean means that I can see if that piece of equipment or that, you know, we use... Um, welded in attachment points to anchor stuff down well if it's full of dirt and covered in stuff you don't know if it's clean or going to support right. stuff and if you this has happened i had a tank you can't see it on the camera and i have a cut in my lip right here oh yeah yeah i had my teeth come through my mouth because i met an m1a1 tank face to face because the chains weren't tight oh Oh. somebody didn't do their job and make sure that their stuff was done right and i got busted in the face in the middle of a severe storm in the middle of the North Atlantic. So, yeah, no, that could totally not answer the question. Yeah, but, but I, yeah. Yeah, we're... you take care of your stuff because somebody else's life depends on it. Um, Confidence, though. Yeah, you fake, I fake confidence all the time. Oh, every time there's a sermon. You want to look good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting better at that. I'm talking about me. <laughs> I can sit there and, and, and I've told, I think I've told you that, that when I play, because I play bass in the band at church, and... As we are playing, and it's my week to give the sermon, and I sit there, and we're playing. I'm great, I'm great, I'm great. And then that last song, we start playing it, and my stomach just goes, Brrr. and I get nervous, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I'm going to puke. I'm going to puke. I'm going to puke. <laughs> I get up there, and my wife has told me, don't chew gum while you're doing your sermon. I have to have gum. My mouth goes completely dry. Have to have gum. Not that I'm chewing it. Sure. I can shove it up in, in my I cheek. This. I can take this. Oh, I do water too. But I have to have something in there that keeps my mouth moist. And I would, I'm just like, oh my gosh. So I get that confidence factor. Yeah, I fake that a lot. I'm trying to think. I don't think there's anything specific that I can remember faking. Because, like, I'm. If I didn't meet a deadline or something, like, I'm just, whatever, fire me and figure to. it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'd rather own up to it than get in trouble for not owning up to it later. Sorry, the dog just went nuts outside. All right. <laughs> we've kind of answered that, but we've, we're, we're going to go ahead and move on. Yeah. <laughs> um, we could have a bunch of, we, I could tell you several shows worth of military stuff. Oh, yeah. Anyway, work life. Work life can be stressful. We all feel it. We all experience it. It's something we all have. Like we've talked about my wife decompressing on the way home. Yeah. Um, what does not bringing the stress of work into your family life look like? Because well, that's tough. Yeah, it's very tough. And I used to, early on in our marriage, um, I was that person that called you saying you owed money. And... I was a bill collector and I was, and, and you call people and yes, we're taught to be rude. We're taught to be mean. 
we speak to people in a, in a derogatory manner. We're taught that way. And, and early on in my marriage, I would bring that home. Mm. And obviously it's a stressful job. You have budgets, you have quotas to meet. And I would bring that home and it was like, I would speak to my family as though I was speaking to somebody I was trying to collect money from. It was just, I had to learn. It had to make, like we had talked about a conscious effort to not do that. Oh yeah. Um, and as we grew in our marriage, there was other things, you know, I mean, you talked about, um, your decompression with Kim on her drive home. Um, we do that. Stephanie and I do that occasionally. We'll just talk. Um, how was your day? We kind of leave sometimes at the same time. So we're both driving home at the same time and it's, it, and it's okay that way. What was going on? Okay. She gets to get out what she gets, needs to get out. I get out what I need to get out. Um, there were times um, when we worked opposite shifts and she would work, you know, she'd get up in the morning, go to work. Um, I would have our oldest daughter, Kristen, and I would get up and she was in, in afternoon kindergarten, get her up, take her to daycare or to kindergarten. And I would go to work. I'd work evening shift. And when I would get home, I had a probably 20, 30 minute drive home and, and, and I didn't talk back then. It was just kind of like, I would not even listen to music. It was just complete silence, and I drove home, and I was just like, oh, you get that, that sigh, that release. And I remember walking in the door, and immediately, this is what your kids did. <laughs> you know, and it's, and, it's, and it's hard being, you know, and, and, and in essence, she was kind of like a single parent at that moment. And it was always, wait till your father gets home. Wait till your father gets home. Yeah. You know, and, it, and it's not something that I needed. I wanted to walk home. I, I missed my family. I didn't get to see my family much during the week because they would get up, they would go to school, they would go to work, and then I would go to work. And then I, most of the time I'd come home and they were, they were in bed. And I'd just go in and tell them goodnight, I love them. And then I'm up for a couple hours and I go to bed. But trying to relieve that stress is is key because if you bring it home and and all you do is walk in and you're you're upset and then you get little things like that look what your kids did and and like you said yeah. you know do you know what happened in this house while you were at your job you know things like that and it's like your stress level just quadrupled you have the stress of work and now you got the stress of home you got the stress of family you got you know individual stresses going on and you can't have that. We do, and we need to manage it. We need to figure out what we're doing. We need to figure out how to get through it. And whether it's just come in and go, don't talk to me. I have a routine. When I get home from work now, I walk in. I'll have my lunch bag. I'll walk in. I'll put it on the table. I'm going upstairs. And I go upstairs. I change my clothes I'm out of my work clothes. I set out my clothes for the next day. Um, I get everything laid out to where all I do is get up, take a shower, get dressed, and I can go. That's my decompression time. That's something I know, okay, I'm set. I, I, can, I can exhale, take that deep breath, and just go, okay, let's go. I have, I have grandbabies at home. Um, well, a grandbaby and grandchildren. They're four, five, five, four, and four months. So it's, I, I go through them all. I love on them, and I'm just like that. To me, helps relieve stress. Um, give the wife a kiss. Mm -hmm. You know, that's something. You're 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 home now. You're home. Cut it off. Work is work. Home is home. Mm -hmm. The hard part about it now is most of us work at home. Mm. Yeah. So where does that come about? Where where? Obviously, I don't work at home. Stephanie doesn't work home, but but you have a wife that works at home. Mm -hmm. You're at home a lot. You're doing stuff at home. You're working from home. I don't know how that is. So how do you deal with stress? It's, so two things. One, we have a dedicated workspace. She has a dedicated workspace. Um, so we have a home office. Um, I have a desk in there and if I need my, my processing space and all that stuff and my big, like my desk is almost the size of this table width wise. Um, I'll work up there or if I do meetings and stuff. Um, 
that's the workspace. Like, that's where work is done. And she'll come down and she takes whatever her time to video game or de-stress or whatever. Um, but I'm the, like, the parent person thing, whatever, Mr. Mom. Mr. Mom. So by the time Kim's done with work, the kids are in bed. So we're, we've finished this. Um, most of the time, like, there are some weeks where most of the time her evenings are, are lighter so I can go do church stuff or whatever. Right. Um, but for like my Uber days or if I'm out doing offices meetings and stuff for me, I try to, I pick up the kids from school at three thirty. I try to be home by two thirty, So I get 30 minutes or 45 minutes of this is me doing nothing, decompressing, letting it out as they shake the house today, apparently. Um, and Kim's the same way. Like, <laughs> yesterday on the way home, my son asked me about a bad word. Because he's third grader, didn't know what it meant. So he asked me. And I told him, hey, don't ever say it again. Like, we had, a, we had a good conversation about it. Like, this is a bad word. Nice. And, like, gave him guidelines. You can ask me about any of those that you see anytime, one time. After that, you say it again, you're going to eat soap. I forgot to talk. <laughs> I forgot to tell him about this conversation, and I went somewhere. Like I went to go do something. Oh, it was Friday. I went to go back to work. On Fridays, I work overnight Uber. Right. Well, late night Uber. Anyway, she comes down after work and watches TV, plays video games or whatever. And after she's ready, we'll have conversations. And I forgot, and so she asked me, "Say what happened with David today?" In bad words, and I just started laughing. It's like, oh, I was waiting for you to get done and and be ready. Um, this, and like I explained it to her. So there has to be transition time. Um, pre COVID, it was the time from when you walk in the door till you're ready. It sounds horrible. Ready to deal with family. And we're in, it sounds weird. Like we're in this culture now and we have been for years. It's not a new thing, but pre COVID we were in this culture of both parents work and all of our kids are stupid busy. And I don't understand this. Like at, it sounds horrible to say this, and I don't know any nice way to say it, but all of our children cannot be the next Michael Jordan, Tom Brady. No. We need to stop sending them to everything like they're going to be the next Michael Jordan or Tom Brady. Um, Dr. Kevin Lehman has a thing that when my kids get there, I am, I am a big fan of. It is one extracurricular activity per semester. If it's a sport, that's fine. You don't do anything else. Right. If it's a club, that's fine. You don't do anything else. Um, and then the next semester so that, and then there's a, a day that everybody's home because it's not like, I'm not going to be you know, like, we call it the daddy wagon. I drive a Tahoe. I'm right. not driving a minivan. Um, I'm not taking three kids to 15 different things six days a week. It's right. not happening. Like you need rest. Your education, frankly, is more important to an extent. I, I'm a fan of tech schools, so like if university is oh, yeah. not the end goal for my kids, that's fine. But until you graduate high school, school and one extracurricular activity. And to the extent that if you want to play soccer outside of school, then there is no extracurricular right. activity. Like you pick one thing. Um because like we all need to be home and be part of family like that's we're building core values of family stuff whole Absolutely. different show but pre all of that there was the transition time and guys whether we know it or not and ladies to an extent we need that transition time 20 or 30 minutes from the door till you're ready to deal with home life whatever that is i say deal with like it's a negative thing till you're ready for dinner and to have good things because when we think about it the reason we bring up the don't bring your stress home is if you've had a bad day at work or your project didn't go well or this proposal or whatever just got done or you've just had a crappy day, the right. problem is if you don't have that transition time or you don't leave your stress at work, it comes out on your wife oh, yeah. and it comes out on your kids. And whether we want to admit it or not, our kids are not going to have a good day if we're screaming at them about, and I'm horrible at this, if we're yelling at them about things that probably really don't matter, we could have just had a conversation about it or they're in third grade and they're making noises and they're banging on the table and they're breaking pencils and they're just trying to do their homework. But you are just so annoyed from everything else that happened that day that every other little uh. annoying thing, including your third grader is going to drive you nuts. Or in my case, my first graders don't have homework. My third grader has homework every day. So he's grumpy. Like, why don't, you know, he 
trying to process why do I have homework every day and they don't. Well, they have more chores than you. Whatever. Okay. It works out. But the problem is that we take those things out later. Now, it's okay to talk about work. Like, that's not the same oh, thing. Yeah. Our spouse is genuinely uh, should be, and mine is interested in things that happen. Like, I tell her some of the stories that happen at work in confidence. Like, I don't tell her everything. Like, if I've had counseling sessions or mediation with, with oh, couples, yeah, that's yeah, none yeah, of her business, can. and she knows that. But if there was, like, a problem I'm stuck on a sermon or, hey, I had this couple... um like the thing we talked about last week where I had the one guy speaking in Spanish, one guy oh, speaking yeah. in English, like those kind of things. Like I'll tell her that stuff, um, you know, or whatever, or traffic was horrible in Tempe because all of this one road that has everything on it is under construction, whatever. Like telling her about those things is fine. It's leaving the stress and the stress turning into unnecessary reactions to things. Oh, that's yeah. the problem. Like, you know, the stress of work and issues at work turning into stress and tension at home. Talking about work is fine. Bringing the emotions from work is not, if that's the right way to f- phrase uh, yeah, that. Yeah, I get that. Because um, our spouses and our kids, for that matter, have stressful days too. Like It's not yeah. easy being a third grader and going through trying to figure out what words in the bathroom mean or whether or not this sixth grader is going to beat you up next week. Um or, you know, my wife has a real job. <laughs> I, I don't think I have a real job. Um, you know, she tells me about those things, but she does a very good job. She gets a transition time. And post-COVID, it's difficult because my wife works at home uh, between my two jobs and then this. Sorry. Between my two jobs and doing the show, I spend a lot of time at home. Or I'm... Uh, I'm not going to stay home. Like I'm one of those guys like COVID didn't really change what I do. Like I'm an Uber driver and I still go to when Panera was open, I would go and write, like I take a day and go there, but then I come home and I have like, here's my 30 minutes to, you know, I listen to KSLX classic rock and just veg for half an hour and decompress. I had to look at the clock. We've been talking for a while. Post COVID. I don't know what that looks like, but there needs to be transition time. I would suggest a dedicated workspace. Right. Um, in our case, like it's 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 our extra room upstairs. Uh, we tried it open format, but then the kids are all there. So dedicated workspace that when work is done, you close the door, literally close Absolutely. the door, and work is in there. That doesn't. I mean, that's not every day. Like yesterday, I went back to work and Kim had a light day, so she brought her laptop down here and watched movies with the kids. That's different. Somewhere in there was a transition of you. She didn't have to to process so much work, but dedicated workspace and then. I know there's so many hours in a day, but you have to dedicate transition time. And I don't know another word for it, but a transition that you can take however many minutes you need to go from work to being family time. Now, if you're a soccer mom and you're driving kids to 20 million things or you're Mr. Dad, you get out of work at 5, you got to pick up this kid at 6.15 to drop them off here at 6.20, but you got to pick this kid up at 6.10 so they can be at you know Taekwondo right. by 8. And you're not all eating dinner again at till nine o'clock and nobody's in bed till 11. There's a whole nother issue of priorities we could talk about, but going from work to home life, there needs to be a transition time. And again, talking about work is fine. Yeah. It's when the stress of work turns into outbursts and emotion and, and tension in the home life. Yeah. It's like, Billy, you want to know what happened at this house while you were at your job? Ladies. Yes. We do want to know what happened in our house while we were at our job, but we don't want to know it as soon as we walk in the door. And you don't want to hear it from us as soon as you walk in the door. There needs to be that space. And 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 I'd, and I'd love to throw this out there. It, it's okay to walk in the house, guys, and 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 nicely tell your wives, "Give me fifteen minutes." Oh yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely okay to do that. And wives, do the same thing, but respect your spouse. Respect that that transition time. Mm-hmm. And, and it's, it's not that they don't want to talk to you. It's not that, th- that we're not trying to open up or anything. We need a moment to process. Yeah. We're home. If, if we can, you know, shut the door, the front door, shut the front door. Now work's done. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't always work that way. I get messages. Yeah. Hey, well, this is what's going on at work, or this is what we need to do for tomorrow. Things like that. Steve, that, that's a little different. Steve Austin used to talk about that, that he would get to his front door, he would stop. He'd pray for a minute and just let work go. 
Oh yeah. And when he crossed the threshold of his front door, That's it right. was a totally different. And not, I don't. We need to ask him one day what transition time looks like for him. Oh yeah. But. But I mean, that's a great point. I mean, if you need to literally just stand at your front door and breathe, Mm -hmm. that's okay too. Yeah. If you hear, I mean, I've walked up to my door and I'm standing there and I can hear the kids screaming, (sighs) you know, and you're like, oh, do I really want to open this door? It's getting nice in Arizona. So we have the windows and stuff open. And so the whole neighborhood can hear it before you walk in the door. (laughs) But it's okay to take that moment. It's okay to take that breath. It's okay to release. Um, and, and, and then say, okay, I'm going to walk in for me. It's, Hey everybody, I'm going to go upstairs, change, blah, blah, blah. Um, but that's what we need to do. And we need to be able to respect our spouses, our, our significant others to, to give them that moment and, and to understand that it, it it's in all in all, it's going to be better that way because now you're mm-hmm. going to avoid the tension. You're going to avoid the arguments. You're going to avoid the, 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 the position that you've put them in. Yeah. To almost be defensive. Mm -hmm. I like this line. We're going to take it right from crosswalk.com. It says, don't take the weight of the day out on your family. Give, giving them your empty fumes and miss what should be the most precious time of your day. That like, oh, stick the knife in and twist it a little bit. Yeah. You know, because that's like, that's again, talking about work is fine. Don't let your empty fumes out on your children and your wife. Yeah. Um, Fumes are easily ignited. Good grief. Facts. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We are out of time, oh. I think. Um, yeah. This was great. This is good stuff. I don't know what we're talking about next week. I probably should look that up before we do the show. Guys, my name's Jeff. That's Mike, where my wife still likes me. My wife still likes me.com. Like, subscribe, comment. Let us know what you want to talk about. Uh, as always, this is a deep one. Mental health is not something to joke about. We are not professionals. If you have a mental health issue, please seek professional help. We cannot make that decision for you. We're just two guys that think you can be better at marriage because your wife will always love you. She won't always like you. Right. But you can work on it. Peace. <laughs>